Welcome to Motivation at Hand, Ma. To know is to know how. Make your foot the foot that counts. Part 15. Case 123CR00257 TSC Document 139 filed November 6, 2023, in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, United States of America v. Donald J. Trump, Defendant. Government's omnibus opposition to defendants' motions to dismiss the indictment on statutory and constitutional grounds. C. The double jeopardy clause does not preclude prosecution here. The defendant separately argues, ECF number 113 at 23 to 24, that the double jeopardy clause precludes his criminal prosecution. In light of the acquittal at his Senate impeachment trial because both Congress and the executive branch are part of the same sovereign. Same as, and Congress has already absolved him at 24 of any criminal conduct. That argument fails for at least two reasons. First, the defendant does not explain how removal and disqualification from office amounts to a criminal sanction so as to put him jeopardy. Second, even assuming that Congress and the executive branch are the same sovereign, given that the article of impeachment alleged indictment the defendant offers no plausible argument that he was acquitted in the Senate of the same offenses charged in the indictment. The court should reject the defendant's double jeopardy claim and find expressly that it is frivolous. 1. The double jeopardy clause does not apply because the penalty for congressional impeachment and conviction I civil, not criminal. The defendant's double jeopardy claim fails because the penalty following impeachment, removal and disqualification from office is not criminal. The double jeopardy clause does not preclude the imposition of any penalty. That could, in common parlance, be described as punishment. Instead, it guards only against imposition of multiple criminal punishments for the same offense. Hudson v. United States 522 U.S. 93, 99, 1997. To determine whether a penalty, typically as set out in a law enacted by a legislature, is criminal or civil proceeds in two steps. First, courts assess whether the legislature, in establishing the penalizing mechanism, indicated either expressly or impliedly a preference for labeling the penalty as civil or criminal. United States v. Ward, 448 U.S. 242, 248, 1980, Confer Johnson v. Quander, 440 F. 3rd 489, 501, D.C. Circa 2006. Assessing whether the purpose of a District of Columbia law directing the the collection of DNA was punitive. Second, even where the legislature intended to enact a civil penalty, Courts must determine whether that penalty is nonetheless so punitive either in purpose or effect as to transform what was clearly intended as a civil remedy into a criminal penalty. Hudson, 522 U.S. at 99. The Supreme Court in Kennedy v. Mendoza Martinez, 372 U.S. 144, 1965. Set out seven factors as useful guideposts, Hudson, 522 U.S. at 99 to determine whether a nominally civil penalty is criminal. 1. Whether the sanction involves an affirmative disability or restraint. 2. Whether it has historically been regarded as a punishment. 3. Whether it comes into play only on a finding of scienter. 4. Whether its operation will promote the traditional aims of punishment, retribution and deterrence. 5. Whether the behavior to which it applies is already a crime. 6. Whether an alternative purpose to which it may rationally be connected is assignable for it. And 7. Whether it appears excessive in relation to the alternative purpose assigned. 372 U.S. at 168 to 69. C. Johnson, 440 F3 and D at 502 to 03. Applying Mendoza-Martinez factors and concluding that DNA collection statute 
was punitive in neither purpose nor effect. Only the clearest proof will suffice to override legislative intent and transform what has been denominated a civil remedy into a criminal penalty. Hudson, 522 U.S. at 100, quoting Ward, 448 U.S. at 249. The defendant cannot come close to showing that removal and disqualification from office is a criminal penalty. First, the historical evidence above showing that the framers intended that Congress could not impose the type of criminal sanctions following impeachment that the British Parliament could exact, see supra, above page 50 number 19, indicates that the framers did not intend to create a criminal sanction. Indeed, the framers initially considered adopting language in the Constitution that provided that no person shall be subject, except in cases of impeachment, to more than one punishment or one trial for the same offense. U.S. Constitution Amendment 5, see Office of Legal Counsel Opinion at 134. But the framers deleted the reference to impeachment when they added the phrase life or limb, suggesting that they found it superfluous. Because impeachment clearly risked neither life nor limb. See same as at 134 to 35. That history underscores the common sense intuition that being terminated from or prevented from obtaining. A job is qualitatively different than facing a prison term or execution. Second, even if that were not so, the Mendoza-Martinez factors overwhelmingly support a finding. That removal and disqualification from office does not constitute a criminal penalty. See Office of Legal Counsel Opinion at 139 to 489. Applying Mendoza-Martinez factors to removal and disqualification following impeachment. Removal and disqualification from office impose no disability or restraint on liberty, see same as, at 139 to 42. They are not treated as punishment, but instead as remedial goals, same as, at 143. The framers' rejection of language that would have permitted impeachment for maladministration tends to show that scienter is a necessary element for an impeachable offense, same as at 145. The mere fact that impeachment presents a deterrent effect is insufficient to render it criminal because deterrence serves civil as well as criminal goals, Hudson, 522 U.S. at 105. Sanctions that the Senate may impose are not already criminal. And the sixth and seventh factors, which concern the ultimate question of legislative or drafter sand ratifiers, purpose, Office of Legal Counsel Opinion at 146, indicate that removal and disqualification were not excessive, but instead deftly tailored not to reach beyond the exact sphere of the misconduct and thus the threat, federal office, same as, at 147. Part 16. To be continued. 2. The double jeopardy clause would not bar prosecution here because the defendant's impeachment proceeding and criminal prosecution do not involve the same offense. Much appreciation to you for giving of your time with us at Motivation at Hand. To know is to know how. We trust you will come back soon.